Alrighty, boys and girls. First thing, there are some nifty new notes on the Google Classroom below this uh, file here that will help you figure out which method to use when you're solving quadratics or there's some notes on how to solve quadratics. So feel free to take a look at those if you're struggling with any particular method. So let's see what we can do here. This section says graphing quadratics and solving by roots. So it says solve each quadratic written below. It's under the section solving by roots. So let's think which method we're going to use. Hmm, I wonder. Well, since we don't have a B term, we're obviously going to be solving by roots. So I add 225 to both sides. And I divide by 45. And 225 divided by 45 is, tell me what it is. You know the answer. You can do this. I have confidence in you. No, I don't have confidence in you. I have a little bit of confidence in you. Okay, the answer is five. I'll just tell you. If you couldn't figure it out, I forgive you. But the answer is five. Now we have x squared equals five, which means we have to solve for x. So that means we have to undo the square. In order to undo the square, you have to take the square root of both sides. So you take the square root of five. Now, every time you take the square root, what do you have to introduce? Tell me. Tell me now. It's a plus or minus, sillies. Don't forget that. If you forget that, you're going to lose points on your quiz, and that would be bad. Next one. This looks scarier. It's this part B. But if I think of it like a linear equation, if I think, okay, this is like my linear part. It's not linear, but let's pretend it is. I want to get that by itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract that 8. Then I still want to get that whole parenthesis thing by itself, so I'm going to divide by negative 4. So I'm going to have x plus 4. Oopsie poopsie. x plus 4 squared equals 2. Now, to undo the square, just as before, I'm going to take the square root. What do I have to remember? Say it. Say it out loud. Plus or minus. So you have x plus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 2. Then, don't forget this part. That says plus 4, so we have to subtract 4. Plus or minus square root 2. Cool. Next one. This is the graphing part of things. Sketch a graph. That means make a table. That's how we do it. So, we want to figure out what makes inside here equal to 0. Well, x plus 1 equals 0. If you need to write it down, x plus 1 equals 0. And saw, so x equals negative 1. That's the middle of my table. Go up 2 and down 2 from there. I could have gone more than 2 because I have a 1 third in front. I could have gone by 3, so that probably would have been nicer. But I'm just going to do it the way that you guys are in general are comfortable doing it. Now you just go through order of operations. You do negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 2. You square it, which is 4, times a third, which is 4 thirds, and then you subtract 5. And 4 thirds minus 5 is going to be 3 and 2 thirds of the negative variety. Same thing for the next one. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. Squared is 1. Times a third is a third. Minus 5 is negative 4 and 2 thirds. Next one. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. Squared is 0. Times a third is 0. Minus 5 is negative 5. 0 plus 1 is 1, squared is 1, times a third is a third, minus 5 is negative 4 and 2 thirds. And then 1 plus 1 is 2, squared is 4, times a third is 4 thirds, minus 5 is negative 3 and 2 thirds again. Now I have to graph. I'm going to make my life easier by making my graph a little bigger. So negative 3, negative 3 and 2 thirds, so somewhere around here. Negative 2, negative 4 and 2 thirds, somewhere around here. Negative 1, negative 5. Doink. And then 1, negative 3 and 2 thirds. So you're going to be something like that and like that. Now, if you create this graph and you don't have something that looks like that or something that looks like this, you did it wrong, and that's bad. 
because this is the fourth time we've seen it. So if you don't have a parabola, you did something wrong. So fix it. Make sure you do. This next section says factoring quadratics and solving by factoring. Hmm, I wonder what we'll be doing in this section. What could it be? Could we be factoring? And then it says factor each quadratic below. There's only one, so just factor the one quadratic. I think I'm going to do it the way most of you are going to do it. And then I'll tell you the, the secret special way that I would do it. So most of you are going to multiply the 3 and the negative 9 and get negative 27x squared. You're going to take that middle term and write that down. So you need numbers that multiply to negative 27. And so numbers that multiply to negative 27 and add to negative 6 are going to be, let's see, I feel like negative 9 and positive 3 would work. So then I'm going to write 3x squared minus 9x plus 3x minus 9. Take a 3x out of those two. Take a 3 out of those two. If you're scared and not sure if you're right, you can always mentally multiply this back in. 3x times x is 3x squared. 3x times negative 3 is negative 9x. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. That was a cool little toy I just played with. And then you go to 3x plus 3 and x minus 3. Last thing I would do, which we're not that concerned about, but if you want to factor it completely, you can still take a 3 out of here. There's a 3 there and a 3 there. So you'd write the 3 in front, x plus 1, and then x minus 3. Just something you could do. Now, the super secret special way to factor this, the way that I would have done it, would have been to first take out that 3. So you have x squared minus 2x minus 3. And then you'd factor from there. So you'd multiply to negative 3, add to negative 2. So that's going to be negative 3 and negative 1. And then you'd factor. So you'd have x, x minus 3, and negative 1, x minus 3. So then you have 3, x minus 3, and x minus 1. Hey, that's the same thing we had above, except I'm a silly pants and put a minus there, and it should be plus. And I wrote minus 3 when I meant plus 1. Plus 1. Cool. Over here. Solve each quadratic below by factoring. So it tells me that. So to factor, I want a 0 on one side. So I'm going to make that happen by subtracting that 8. Now, I can't take out a greatest common factor, so I'm going to multiply the first and the last. So 5 times 16 is 50 plus 30, which is 80. And I want to add to 18. Now, I could start writing down all the numbers that multiply to 80. But since they add to 18, I know it. It's pretty easy. It's going to be 10 and 8. And now I just factor. So I look at those two. Take out a 5x. x plus 2 plus 8. x plus 2 equals 0. So you have 5x plus 8. x plus 2. Now you're not done. You are not done yet. You have to go just a little bit farther. Write down this equation and this equation, and solve. So subtract that 8, divide by 5, subtract that 2. Those are your two answers to that problem. Next. Hmm, I wonder what method I should use. Ooh, this is nice direction. Solve the following by either completing the square. No, solve the following by completing the square. That either word should not be there. That is a typo, sillies. So you have x squared minus 12x minus 33. If you put a smiley face right under that either, that'll show me that you actually watched this video, and I'll learn something from you. So to complete the square, let's move that constant. You're going to split that middle term. So I'm going to do it the long way that some of you guys do it, which is fine. Split that middle term. 
and you want to add up here 36 and 36. You're adding 36 because that's what 6 squared is. Then I'll simplify the right side. And then I factor the left side. So some of you just go through and you factor. x minus 6 minus 6, x minus 6. And then you wind up with x minus 6 times x minus 6, so two of those. You could go directly from here to here. You don't need to do those steps in between, but you don't have, you, if you're comfortable doing those steps, you can. I took the square root of both sides, which means I have to remember plus or minus. Plus or minus. And then I add 6 to both sides. 6 plus or minus. There we go. Next one, same thing, we have to complete the square. So first things first, maybe I move that constant. You could divide by 2 first if you wanted to, but I'm just going to move the constant. Now I divide by 2. I'm going to do this side the faster way. You split that middle term, square it, so you've got to add 4 up here. So that's 25. Take the square root of both sides, don't forget the plus or minus. Then you subtract 2. And my recommendation is you write it like this. And then you say what's negative 2 plus 5? That's 3. And negative 2 minus 5? That's negative 7. Those are your two answers. Solve the, the quadratic using the quadratic formula. All right. So in order to use the quadratic formula, I need it equal to 0. Now I just fill it in. So x equals the opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now, I might, if I were you, note what a, b, and c are. So a equals 10, b equals negative 7. This, you might want to do this before you do the quadratic formula so that you know what's going on. You can write them down once it's equal to zero, and then you can just plug it in, plug it in. Or plug it in, plug it in. So then I do underneath the square root, that's 49. 4 times 10 is 40, times 5 is 200. Since I have two negatives, that's a plus. And then all over 20. 49 plus 200 is 249. That is not a perfect square, so there's nothing I can do from there. So I'm done, right there. So that one told me a quadratic formula. This one says, try to be most efficient. So I'm going to go through the questions that I have. So maybe first thing I do is make it equal to 0, just to make myself comfortable, because many of my methods I'm going to need it equal to 0. There is a b term, so I can't use solving square roots. There is a greatest common factor. I can divide every one by 2. So divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. So that's going to be 2x squared plus x minus 21. Now I'm going to see if I can factor. So I want numbers that multiply to negative 42x squared and add to 1x. Oh, I know those. That's 6 and 7. Well, sort of. One of them has to be negative. So positive 7, negative 6. And then factor, factor. Factor, factor. So good to me. And then x minus 3, 2x plus 7. Now you're not done. You are not done. Write those two equations and solve. If you don't write those equations and you can just solve it and you write the two answers, that's okay too. But it might be a good idea to write those down. Subtract the 7, divide by 2. I hope you have enjoyed this learning moment.